We welcome in Antonio Pierce and Coach. Congratulations. How different was the celebration because you're flying back with the victory on Christmas night? Even better. Present was better. It was bigger. <laughs> the bow was wasn't red. It was black. You know, <laughs> and it, it just felt good, man. The, the energy from the sideline to the locker room to that plane ride and just our team. The, the, the whole the whole flight, you know, everybody that was on that plane that was a part of that, um, it was a special moment, obviously, for us getting the win. It was big for us. But on the, on the day, on Christmas Day, coming back home and being able to celebrate with your family was good. I want to stay with the travel. You've nailed the 10 a.m. starts. It doesn't seem to be a problem. And walk me through that, what you did in preparation and starting early and then a 10 a.m. start there doesn't, doesn't get anybody to blink. Yeah, I mean, it really started the week in Miami. Mm-hmm. You know, we pushed uh, our times up just like today. You know, get get in here early. Uh-huh. Start day at six thirty. We'll be on the grass at ten o'clock, which is the same time that we'll mm-hmm. be playing, and we've done that pretty well. You go back to that Miami game; we were up ten seven in the first quarter. We started fast, uh, just didn't do a good job of finishing. And then you know, it was no different this week. And with the Chiefs guys, you know, no, no, nobody's blinking. Mm-hmm. It don't matter what I throw at the guys yeah. right now. You know, it's just it's a good group to be around because. Any challenge they accept, they do it um, with still eye focus, and, and, and they take it on and take pride in doing it. I want to compare this game to the Charger game when it comes to physicality and swagger. Any different when you're up, when you put up 63, you're going to have swagger and you're pushing a team around. But this was a lower scoring game. What was the difference in the physical play? Well, I mean, we talked about it. You know, here's a team uh, talking about the Chiefs mm-hmm. who's played a lot of football over the last three years. And, you know, over time, that, that takes a toll on you. And you can see that as you're watching games this year. Uh, we just felt that we're the fresher team. We're the team with a bigger purpose mm-hmm. at this point. Uh, and to be honest, you know, the style of play that we want to have and that we want to – that we've embraced and that we want to showcase to the world is that of physicality. You ran the game out at the end behind Zeus. Was that a change of the game plan at halftime? What you saw, the struggling in the passing game from the yeah. second quarter on, what were you and the coaches thinking coming out in the third quarter, seeing what the struggle was on offense and how the running game got going? Yeah, we talked about it as, as a staff throughout the week. Do whatever it takes to win. You know, obviously the week before the Chargers, we airing the ball out and everything's mm-hmm. pretty and fine. Well, didn't go our way. You know, yeah. it wasn't the ball wasn't bouncing our way in this game, throwing the ball. And obviously, when you just looked at the numbers, it's like man, we're averaging almost four point five yards in the first half rushing, whatever that number was. It was like the whole line is they're moving, and then the running back, listen, fresh legs in the month of December, and the guy is running downhill and and, and and trying to showcase his ability. That's that's good football. And I think the thing that I was most proud about our team, right? It was around whatever two forty or whatever on the clock. I said, man, they can't have the ball back. Mm-hmm. And we talked about that early in the week. Do not allow them to have the ball at the end of the second quarter, in the fourth quarter. And when you saw those two runs by Zeus and the way our old line and the way our sideline exploded and didn't have the best formation of football show up for three yeah. straight plays, that, that, that's what it's all about. And you mentioned that about Aiden. That was a great way to end the game. To get him right for this game if it turns into a high-scoring game, is it more timing with him, reps this week in practice? What are you looking to do with him? Yeah, same thing. I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those deals like – it's rookie, it's, rookie, it's rookie quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we're going through ups and downs with them. We're all doing it together. And um, it's going to be one of those things where we've got to put in more time, not only in the classroom, in the walkthroughs, mm-hmm. on the practice field, more time afterwards, and just really making sure he's comfortable and has a true understanding of what he's seen and what we're trying to do. And then we've got to make the plays. We've got to make the throws. There's opportunities there. And I've said that before. And then, you know, we exploded. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be opportunities this week. And we just got to make the plays. We got some really good football players when they have the ball in their hands. It's Aiden's job and Bo's job and my job to make sure we get the ball in those guys' hands. Emotionally, we're getting to know Jack Jones. And you know him since high school. We know Max. He's everywhere. Tell us more about Malcolm Koontz, the human being, the player, and the man. Because I think the rest of the league, all these, all these shows that don't know him are now starting to talk about him. And they're trying to find a backstory. Yeah, listen, I mean, he's, he's the quiet assassin. Is he? You know, yeah. it's, okay. He even walks through the building. You got to kind of like, where's, where's Malcolm? And, then, you know, boom, here he is. But he has such a burst and such a now, – now his presence is showing up a little bit more. He mm-hmm. walked through this building. Yeah, just, got uh, it out. I mean, shaking that hair and the neck, man. It's good to see – listen – you knew at some point somebody on our D-line or on our defense was going to match Max Crosby's ability to rush the passer. Mm-hmm. When you're getting full slide protection to him, two men, three men, chips, anything you can think of to try to slow 98 down, you got that one-on-one matchup, man. Come on, take yeah. advantage of it. And he's done that the last three to four weeks. Now, I know the last two weeks has really shown up, but if you watch, he's been around the quarterback and hit him. It's starting the Jets game. Mm-hmm. Go back to that one. He had a good job. He did a good job in that one. 
But he's a very explosive player. He's really found who he is. And I think we found as a staff what he does well. And that's gone hand in hand as the production is there now. One more thing about Kansas City. We sat here a week ago and talked about these misdirection plays. And many times coaches in this building said, we know, we just can't stop it. You did. Everyone, we talked about the discipline with your eyes. What did you notice when they tried to get cute, when they were trying to run a little misdirection, and how you knew about it ahead of time? Yeah, I mean, and I said in one of my press conferences, Mm -hmm. you know, they have a million of them. You don't know which one's going to come, but you know it's going to come at some point. And just, and I'm telling you, it's cliche, and everybody, I, man, do your job. What are you supposed to look at? I'm supposed to look at you? I look at you. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at that shield? I look at that shield. I'm supposed to talk to the mic? I talk to the mic. Just do that. Right. I'm not actually doing three things. Just one and maybe two. And the third thing be special, right? So with our group, they've done that. You saw it with the interception with Jack Jones. You saw it really that fumble caused by Big Jinx. If you see the penetration that he has yeah. early on, I think the eyes go down there. And then obviously Bilal is Johnny on the spot and a hell of a job by our guys. And how about that? Two 300-pounders back-to-back week scoring touchdowns. It's incredible. Love it. Let's talk about the Colts. Who are they? Because I went back and looked at the Ravens game. They beat the Ravens, and everybody had a good game. Quarterback had a good game. They ran the ball well. They have a great linebacker in Zazir Franklin who's having an unbelievable year. What is the identity of your next opponent? Yeah, a team that wants to be physical. They want to run the football. Okay. Let's not, let's not get fooled by that. They got a quarterback now that's, that's pretty savvy, mm-hmm. and he does a really good job of distributing the ball. Big wide receiver in Pittman. Uh, not, no, not sure he's the only one playing this game for them as well. And then offensive line, you know, we, we faced those guys last year. They want to be physical. They want to hit you in the mouth. And on the other side of the ball, they're built up front. That D-line is really good. Right. You know, they got two interior guys that we got to take care of, and you already talked about the linebacker, Franklin, and he runs around, makes a lot of tackles. But it's about the Raiders. How do we execute what are we going to do? And that's what we've been about mm-hmm. since I've taken over. It's not about the opponent. It's about us. It's about our execution. It's about our mindset. It's about our mentality. How are we going to attack this team? Gave it to the guys yesterday. Now it's our job for the next couple of days to put it in person. We always kind of wrap it up, Coach, with the fans. And this is an easy game for them to get to. Over the years, getting to Indy for Raider Nation, where it's in the middle of the country, you can get there from all over the right. place. Have you noticed how invigorated the fan base has been as you're walking around your life here in Henderson and Vegas? Can you share a story or two about the fans and your interaction? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're out in full force now. <laughs> Raider Nation, they'll find you. I don't yeah, know. They'll I don't find know. you. I guess I've been on TV a little bit too much. But um, it, it's been great, man. And, and I've embraced them. They embraced us, the organization, back and forth. And, again, no different when I was a player. You understand what this game's about, right? It's about it's entertainment business, it's production business, and it's about the fans. And when they're happy and they see what they like on the field, they let you know. And they let you know good or bad. Yeah, they do. And I respect that, and I, lo- I don't want no other way because I'm black and white, no gray with me. But the interaction has been amazing. I, the quick story is, you know, obviously my Impala, the red one that everybody knows now, uh, you know, I'm driving down the strip, and uh, I got probably like a caravan kind of escorted me all the way down the strip. And it's pretty cool. They're honking the horns. They're raiders. They got flags out, wow. face painted. Uh, it was pretty cool. It was like, all right, well, you know, normally I call Bob, our security guy, and you know, say I need a security escort, but I had Raider Nation take me to the house. Happy New Year, Coach. Happy New Year's.